Okay, now another video slog through. This is one of my favorite sites on the internet because it's so handy and easy to use. The guys who write little presses pieces on each of these uh, emperors. See, dear the Imperatus Romanus. Okay, these guys are all scholars or teachers at universities. And they write cute little presses pieces with, which, with short but nice bibliographies. So I really like this site. And in order to get the satire, you know, like I did in the Ephesians videos, one of the things you need to do is have a good handle on the chronology. Because what Paul is doing is he's paralleling the rising apostasy of church with the rising, what do you want to call it, uh, decrepitude of the emperors of Rome because the idea as you know the text of Ephesians tells you in other places the, the Christian determines history this is not like Israel okay we have our own covenant and there's no prophecy governing when our time ends it's a body count John 17 not a time promise the only th thing about time that's actually promised is that you know we will complete and that's in answer to John 17 prayer, starting at verse 20. You know, I ask, sanctify them in tr truth, thy word is truth. I don't ask only for me, but for, for them who hear their word. Okay, well, who's, how many are going to hear the word of the apostles that get written down as scripture? It's left open-ended on purpose. So it's God, Father, discretion, when church goes up. Okay, it's our ascension. Christ had his ascension. This is our ascension because we're body of Christ. Nobody knows when that's going to happen. And then Ephesians 4, uh, 4, 12 and 13 tells you when it's going to happen. It happens when we're, as a group, uh, sort of like in mass, we reflect Christ. We are reach the stature of the fullness of the maturity of Christ. No, None of us are going to do that individually, but as a group, like a mosaic. Okay? So... Paul is satirizing the fact that, yeah, well, the rapture is really going to happen, and that's going to be all true. But it's also going to happen because church becomes so apostate that God has to call it home or nobody else will believe in Christ. That's basically the theme of what he's starting here, and that's actually what Christ is saying here, okay, as you go through the text. See, it starts off, it's this very satirical and biting, blepite, okay, see to it. That nobody deceives you. That's what this says in English. Okay, but that's exactly the opposite of what happens during this historical period. This historical period in Matthew 24, 4 is covering the period from roughly, we'll just say for round numbers, 57 AD, okay, to 77 AD. Okay, 56 to 77 AD. That's what that text covers. Each syllable equals a year, just like it does in all the other Bible meters. All right, so it ends up being a biting indictment of church. See to it that nobody, you know, leads you astray. Planao right here really means to lead astray, to um, go astray like a wandering sheep. The word Hebrew in Hebrew means to wander like sheep. Very interesting word. And Daniel uses it to really good effect in Daniel 9. So planao is the Greek equivalent of that. I'm planaoing here and I'm planaoing there. And it also means to deceive when somebody is trying to make you go astray. All right, so the big key theme of the time period from 56 to 77 AD is that you gotta be warned not to go astray because that's exactly what you're gonna do because you're a sheep, okay? Now, that was what Paul himself was saying here, too. Covering the same time period, same number of syllables, okay? But he's using different words to characterize the time. Okay, look at the English here. I, what I did is I, I created an English translation that had the same number of syllables as each one of these clauses, okay? And in Paul, in particular, this is what's so really kind of biting, is that this up to autois is 11 syllables and this is 10 syllables. Paul reverses them. Now that 
you know, you have to understand something about Greek drama. It's very subtle. This verse is saying, be careful. See to it that you don't go astray, that you don't be deceived. Okay, but we are deceived. So Paul reverses the syllable clauses. This is 10 instead of 11 because we are deceived. And then the, you know, the part of the text is before he even talks, you know, and answering Jesus said to them, that's this text right here, okay it's reversed and put second and because it's second and because we were deceived the temple in history but Paul speaking prophetically at the point goes down right here at what some scholars will call 73 AD and others will call 70 AD you can call it either one okay in 66 you got the rebellion against Florus all right and in some timeline 73 AD is when they they you know say Masada or the temple went down take your pick I'm going to give you a few seconds to absorb that because i got to just walk away for a second. Sorry, I'm, I'm so excited I have to sort of calm down. Okay, so now we come back here to our Roman emperors. And what's the time period? Nero. Nero was Roman emperor, you know, after Claudius was poisoned. Nero was Roman emperor from 54 to 68. And of course, 68 ends up becoming the year of the four emperors. And that's a topic all in itself. And I did my own Vimeo channel on that called the year of the four emperors. If you want to get some books and stuff like that that you can read up on. But you can Google on it and just play with that. But the point is, is that we're looking at Nero starts here and goes to here, which is hysterical. But I've already covered why it's so funny for Nero. I'm not going to focus on that now. What I'm focusing on now is just the, the time itself, okay, to show how the text in Matthew 24 is being played on for the same years by Paul in Ephesians okay so the text versus Matthew is in atoi prokatabolis cosmu alright that's in him before the founding of the world okay and then here in Matthew 24 verse 4 and Christ said to them see to it that you are not deceived or see to it that you don't wander away from the doctrine okay those are the two lines now this is very important in, in Greek drama they did stuff like this they made really uh, subtle jokes about contemporaneous things as a satire and they had to be very subtle because otherwise the emperor could come in and you know kill him more room killed because you were violating the maestas of the emperor of the empire. In other words, they didn't have free speech. Okay, if you said something insulting enough of the emperor, you could actually be executed for that. So they learned in their dramas and in their comedies to be very subtle in the way they satirized. And remember, this stuff is being written contemporaneously. Christ is talking, and Matthew is writing in 30 A.D. All right, and Paul is writing this in 56 AD when Nero was still alive. So it's not like he's going to make the satire he's writing jump on the head and make it real obvious. Okay, now, but you know it's satire because on the Nero side of it, Katabolis Cosmo, Nero was famous during those days. Well, this is actually future to Paul, but he, but he had started, you know, talking like that at the time Paul was writing. He was famous for thinking he was the real foundation of Rome, that he was the heart and soul of Rome, and he wanted to rename it Neropolis, and he wanted to change the calendar, and oh, I'm so great and I'm so important. So that's a satire against Nero. Okay, N Nero considered himself a god. I was there before the founding of the world, and everybody should bow before me. Megalomania. You know, kind of like Donald Trump. All right? And Christ, of course, is, is doing the same thing here. 
except that Nero didn't exist yet in 30 AD. All right? So this is covering the period from 56 to 77 AD in both cases. Therefore, it is satirizing or explaining or informing the Christian reader in advance what time is going to be like then. Okay? And what Christ is basically saying, hi, from 56 to 70 AD, your biggest concern is whether or not you're going to be in the doctrine, whether or not somebody's going to deceive you. And of course, that's pretty timeless for right now. Okay? Hold on. Think about it that for a minute. Okay, so how does this text cover that period as far as historical events so you know it's not hallucinated? We know how this one did, because this is basically Nero, one of Nero's bragamonies. I'm the founding of Rome, okay? And then it gets even funnier when you get into the next clause, because he dies here, okay? And he's pronounced. Okay, it's, it's, to be is the actual verb. But it has a connotation of being pronounced. The way, you know, in the syntax here. See, because you are, to say that you are holy, that's a pronouncement. Alright? So Nero has his own apotheosis, which because he thought he was a god. So here's when he dies. You are alright. Nero, you thought you were the founding of Rome, founding of the world, greatest thing since white bread, and now you are. Of course, he's in hell, but he can be the greatest person in hell if he wants. Da ding Payback. Okay, so now we come here, and Christ is covering the same period. Alright, so here we got 11 syllables up to here, from 56 to 67. Nero's not yet dead, right? He doesn't die till 68. The next syllable. Oh, this is such a killer. This, the satire is just, I want to kill myself. Look. This is Nero up to 67 AD. He's not dead yet. In January of 68, he has his last sort of like celebration. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, I want to say it was by June or July of 68. He's dead. And that begins the year of the four emperors. Okay. Otho, Vitellius, no, Gal I think it's Galba, Otho, Vitellius, and then finally Vespasian. All right. Blepite. Blepite. See to it. See. Literally, the word is, it's a command. Look. Well, yeah, well, how is Nero going to look at anything when he's dead? Look, Nero, you thought you were so great. Now look at your grave. I mean, does it get more biting than this? And the same kind of sarcasm, the same kind of satire I've already covered, Paul is using all the way throughout Ephesians to the point of spotting every time he gets to, um, where is it, Telematos, right here, the Ada there. It occurred, there are three different uses of that word in Ephesians passage. Each one, that particular one being Trajan, each one is reserved for the death year of an emperor whose successor undid everything the emperor did. That's pretty biting. That's like saying, hi, you thought you were so important. I'm God. And you know what? Now you're gone. You had opportunity. Believe me, you didn't. And you know what? That's it. Time's up. Curtain down. Okay. So, what is Nero blepping? What is Nero seeing? Blep. 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 See? See? Oh, well, but he's dead. So his eyes are open, but he can't see a thing. Because he was blind his whole life. You see, this is the kind of satire that Greeks used. All right, that's what, that's how come I can be real sure 
of what's being said applying to Nero. Now, as a result of Nero's death, everybody and his brother was totally trying to see to it that the other guy was put down, so they were all deceived. You had first Galba, then Otto, then Vitellius, then finally Vespasian. And the really sicky thing here is during Nero's last couple of years, right in here in particular, this is when the Florist Rebellion occurred in Jerusalem. And in 66, Nero was in Greece. And Vespasian happened to be, happened to be nearby, stationed doing his, you know, army thing, just a little bit north of where Nero was. And Nero called Vespasian in, and they weren't particularly good, you know, on good terms. Because, because they were both backed by different factions in Rome. But this is where they finally made a, a kind of unity. And Nero dispatched Vespasian to put down the Jewish rebellion, which started at this time, around 66, you might even say 64, due to something that Florus did that, that the Jews got all up in arms about. That set into motion a whole bunch of deception and a whole bunch of seeing, and a whole bunch of everybody not paying attention, of course, to this text. See to it that you're not deceived. See to it that you don't wander. Everybody and his brother was wandering. In 66, the Jews were wandering so much in all their factions about who was the real Messiah and blah 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 that they finally hold themselves up in the temple. And that's what you know caused the temple to finally go down in what we call 70 A.D. And of course, that point is right here. Because look, here's 66, 67, 68, oh, 69, no more Nero, 70, okay, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, okay, but see, there's an extra three years with the Varro thingy. So we call it 70, but they called it later. Ha! Okay. Hagius means holy. Holy ones, actually. Accusative case. And so most of your books, or depending on which way they do the thing, they say that the period of taking down the temple went from 66 to 73. Well, there you are. Hagius, holy. Ha ha. All right, and that was due to what? Not seeing to it, not blepping. Blepite, oh, but they weren't seeing a thing, except each other, and oh, I'm more powerful than you, and I'm the real Messiah, and all the Jewish factions were fighting with each other, and they finally, you know, got taken down by Titus, whose dad Vespasian had become emperor during that time. Okay? See to it that you are not deceived. Yeah, but everybody was deceived. Again, Paul is reversing. See, this is ten syllables. This the corresponding clause is eleven syllables. This is ten syllables, but they weren't doing it. So Paul puts the eleven here and the ten here for what they weren't doing. In other words, just like Nero was blind, just like Nero was over vaunting himself, just like Nero thought, oh, I'm so great, I'm the foundation of everything, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, so too the Jews and the Christians. See to it that no one leads you astray. So they all went astray, just like good little sheep will do. Thinking, oh, you know, I, 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 and the hymn, this is really hysterical, because there were so many false messiahs then, Everybody on the Jewish factions all fighting with each other. Or who's the real Messiah? Of course, the real Messiah had already died, but nobody's paying attention to that. Okay? In him before the founding of the world. Oh, well, then you're the Messiah, not that other guy who died in 30 AD. I'll, 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 I'll align with you. And then we all hide ourselves in the temple. And then Titus comes in, and he rips it all apart. Hagios. And then you're dead, and yes, then you really are holy. Because you got saved. Thank God. See how satirical this is? And I've only gotten through verse 4. There's 51 verses in Matthew 24. So I'll stop there. Peace out.